when I was in the seventh grade, we had a science fair every year. And I remember this particular year because the, what I worked on was electricity. Well, my father's an engineer and we worked on this together. And I learned a tremendous amount about electromagnetism and several little experiments, set up our little trifold board, went down to the competition at our school. And as it happened, the top two would get to go on to regionals. Well, I came in third and I was not happy. I was in fact indignant because I was convinced that I knew more about electromagnetism than anybody else knew about any other subject that they had been studying. Now, obviously, I'm an arrogant little seventh grader at this point, so much so that uh, after I got home that afternoon, I got on my bicycle and I rode my bicycle over to my teacher's house just to express my indignation. After that, uh, I went back home and my father had gotten home from work by that time. And he listened to me rant and rave, and then he asked me a simple question. He said, well, did you learn anything? I said, oh yeah, I learned a tremendous amount. I learned that, 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 that. Yeah, I learned a tremendous amount. And then he said, well, you know, I was under the impression that that was the objective. Now, if I was wrong in my impression and the objective was actually to win a prize or something so that you could go on, well, if that's the objective, we could work on that next year. Next year, rather than learning being our objective, we could make our objective being impressive such that you could go on to the regionals. What do you think the goal should be? Well, end of case, next case, right? The, the issue was over. But, but often we don't see it as clearly as my father's. Is, is the issue learning or is the issue some sort of performance that would impress others? Now, the truth of the matter is uh, most parents are concerned that their children do well, that they would go to school, that they would lead productive lives, that they would have resumes that would allow that to happen. The thing is, build the character, build the love of learning, build the passion to know, build the discipline to work well, all of that takes care of itself. When Charlotte Mason put together a curricula for her schools, she thought in a very broad way. She wanted them to have many relationships with this great inheritance, she called it, our world. And so she had 16 to 17 different subjects in which the students were prepared for each year and that they would grow in all these varied relationships. As these students encountered these relationships, they would grow in the knowledge of history, in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of the universe, in the knowledge of humankind, in the knowledge of music and art, in the knowledge of conditioning of how one's body could be exercised. And it was the hope thereby that they would have many relationships, therefore many choices to choose from as they grew older. Often what I had encountered in education, if you had an interest in something at a young age, that was the area you developed. But she thought otherwise. She thought it was important to give children many relationships at the very beginning of their years. Perhaps the most important thing I've learned is that we are shaped by relationships and the ideas that stand behind those relationships that healthy living is, can only occur when there are healthy relationships and healthy ideas behind those relationships. As a school, we've got to be very intentional about the kinds of relations we're cultivating and the kinds of ideas that are seeding those relations. What are the classroom dynamics? What is the relationship between teacher, taught, and text? And how are the hearts and minds of children being shaped? All too often we think we just put children through a factory. If they learn their facts and pass their tests, all will be well. That might work if, they're, if they were robots. It might work if 
persons were more like machines and just had blank slates in their brains and just processed data. But we live out of our hearts even more than we live out of our heads. And for an education to be a fruitful one, one that lives, leads towards a full and meaningful life, we've got to be as intentional in, about the ways the heart is being shaped as we are intentional about the way the intellect is being shaped.